Hey, what's up, guys? In this video, we're going to be going over 6.4.1, which is the first quest of um, the content creator program. I mean, I'm not part of it, but like, see, what's it called? You just beta testing, that's what it's called. I don't know who got this, but I got invited to it, so I just accepted it. I don't know who did, who didn't, but anyways, I'm just going to show you um, the paths and how this works. Basically, you have infinite revives, infinite health potions, infinite um, boost, whatever, infinite energy, and you can only go to 6.1, I mean 6.4.1 this first day. So for now, we only have the first quest out, so I'm going to show you how to do it, and yeah, let's get into it. For this first path, I'm going to be doing this in order. This is the easiest path, in my opinion. This is all opinion also, depending on what your roster is, which certain paths could be harder. This whole path is basically just don't bring any champions with, like, regen buffs, and then you're pretty much good. So, just to show for this one, you really just don't want anyone with the regen buffs because then they're going to take it and they're going to gain, like, buffs and stuff. And as long as you have anyone that doesn't have passive regen, this is literally just, like, not a late, like, a late, um, a noted path, really. Because you also will be gaining armor every few seconds, or not armor, fury every few seconds. So, watch out for that. They will be hitting a little bit harder. But other than that, this is one of the easiest out of. This is definitely by far the easiest one, in my opinion. And this whole quest, they get... There's only one really bad path, I would say. But the other ones can be tricky if you're on the right counters. So yeah, this is the this is the first quest and just a little gulk fight I wanted to show. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. This is one of the, definitely the easiest path. So for this node, the second path, the second easiest in my opinion, is colorblind. Which basically means you can't bring two of the same characters into the... I don't know, sorry, two of the same classes. So, like, out of your five champs you bring in, they all have to be different classes. They're going to take degen damage. And then, also, 200% power gain. So, that's not that bad. You're just going to take the fight slowly. And then, uh, and then another node, which basically makes it so... If you regenerate, or any, like, regens, they'll take um, some da direct damage. But then, after that direct damage, you'll be doing less damage for the rest of the fight. So, just... I don't know many champions that even have passive regens so or i mean regen buffs so you'll be f pretty much most champs for this fight um lane's fine but the other part of that note is immune to all damaging o overtime debuffs so with champions like symbiote supreme which you're going to see here the leads won't work so this is kind of a not the best matchup for me honestly probably shouldn't have brought symbiote supreme for this but eh, whatever he, I didn't realize it at the time because I didn't read the notes. So basically, no damage in overtime debuffs on this lane. You just want champions that can hit hard. And you should have played it slow from the 200% power gain. But other than that, this lane's pretty easy. There's not much to it. Just play the fight slowly. Get a champion that can hit pretty hard without... Um, what's it called? Without debuffs. And you don't want two of the same classes on your team or you're going to get screwed. So that's pretty much all there is to this lane. So you should... I mean, it's a pretty easy land overall. It's probably the second easiest out of all of them. And yeah, let's get to the next one. For the third easiest path, this path is a full path of a power shield, which is basically, if you don't know, none of your attacks do any damage except for special attacks, but your special attacks have 400% damage increase. So this is a pretty, it's a pretty fun node with like Corvus Ghost. But the only problem is this Bane node, which you can see it ticks for a crazy amount. Like, like one or two ticks just does a crap ton of damage. So you're really gonna try time this right. But the the if it wasn't for the bane node, this would definitely be probably the easiest path. That this is the regen path because they're both really easy. But this, the bane node is what makes this path just I don't know. It's um this node could be debated with the next node for how hard it is. It's just as long as you can time the bane transfers properly, it's a pretty easy node. But with any champion that do really big special damage, this lane's pretty easy as long as you can time them right. So yeah, let's take a look at the, uh, take a look at the next lane. The next node we got here is called Thermostat, Sharing and Caring, and Hot and Bothered. Basically, Thermostat makes it so you start the fight with ten Thermostat charges, which you can see from my Corvus. Landing a basic attack will increase it by one. Block an attack or activating a special attack decreases it by two. If it reaches zero, the attacker is inflicted with a cold snap. And so if you're cold snap immune, it's not you're not really gonna be reaching zero too much in this fight, which I found, unless you're blocking it crafting. But 
if you get to 20, which is more of the problem, you get a incinerate debuff. So when you're fighting this, you want to try to block a little bit more than you normally would just to like lower the thermostat charges. And then, any, and then the next note sharing is carrying is anytime the attacker triggers a regen buff or passive, the defender gains 100% of the health from that buff or passive. So you basically just don't want to bring any champions to that regen. I don't know that many champions that really do regen, but you'd be pretty much fun. And then hot and bothered, which is not that important, which is defensive ability is lowered by 80% while the under the effects of incinerate. But as long as you're playing well, you won't be under the effects of incinerate. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is to this note. It's just managing the temperature charges might be a little difficult at first. Once you get used to it, it's not that hard. So yeah, on to the next lane. The next lane, and the, probably the second hardest out of all of them, is biohazard um, tunnel vision. So basically, you need to bring a champion that's bleed immune. As long as you're playing well, you won't need the poison. I forgot here that it was biohazard, and I hit into his block, and I pretty much die. Not much I could do there. It was kind of just a rip. But that mixed with tunnel vision, which is basically another... If you do the same thing twice, you will get a falter debuff. And the only way to get the falter debuff off is to miss and hit. So you could probably just parry them and then swing. With the Agent Venom matchup, it's not that good. You see, even things like blocking twice. I just blocked his attack twice. I got the Falter. So a character that I found was actually really good for this. Well, it's, you know, Corvus, because he's good for everything. Just because his combos consist of, like, you block to parry. Medium, light, medium. And you're not doing any of the same two movements in a row. But the problem is, like, Agent Venom, which is special one, stuff like that. You have to do the same movement twice. I mean, by, like, holding block, I mean. So it's a very interesting node combination. I would say Corvus is one of the best champions, but like Ghost, um, Ghost, Corvus, the two that come to mind, like just because of how well they work with um, their combos, like the way Ghost can just phase in one hit, so she can phase as one move, they swing at her, and then she mediums and phase, so you're not doing ever the same attack twice in a row. But make sure it's kind of hard because you want to hit their block to bait out their attacks, but you can't because then you'll get poison unless you have a double immune character, like Ghost, which would be pretty good, but like for someone like Corvus, and right there I blocked a special one. Got two, I got a Falter debuff. So like it's really like you just gotta. It's a hard node combination. That's why it's the second artist in the list. But like, definitely not as bad as it could be. But yeah, lucky special two to finish the fight. And yeah, let's hop to the final lane. This final lane, which is probably gonna be the hardest for, I would say everyone, unless you have a Nick Fury basically, or Aegon. Aegon actually works really well for this. Is a do you bleed node? But mixed with this other node, which is every debuff you have on the opponent, they'll have more power gain and more attack. So for characters like I tested Symbiote Supreme, when you get all those bleeds on, it stacks up way too high and their power bar just shoots up. And these are some chunky opponents. But the health pools seem to be lower than 6.3, which seems nice, which is good. I think they learned the mistake from how high the health pools were. But I would say you need like deep runes 5 out of 5, ideally, for this path. You can use Blade, which I used, which is, I figured out, but you gotta be careful when you use Special 2, because it pushes his power bar pretty high. But I would say the top two characters I've seen so far and tested, Aegon, getting them built up and then and getting the Furies, like getting hit and getting the Furies on you. For just a massive Special 2, that does a crap ton That's a really good tactic. And then Nick Fury, obviously, but if you don't have a Nick Fury, this path is gonna be not fun. This is definitely the hardest path for most players, if you have a Nick Fury, this might not be the hardest path, but most people don't have a Nick Fury, five star maxed out. So, Aegon and Nick Fury, Blade, he's working pretty, I mean, he's working, but I had to take off Suicide for this, because, you know, the amount of specials you're throwing, you're just gonna die, which kind of hurts, not using specials, my bleed are doing like, I mean, not using Suicides, my specials are doing a lot less, not specials, my bleeds are doing a lot less damage, but like right there, my special too, it, don't do it when you have too much power, because, each bleed that gets placed, he'll have more and more power gain, so your special two might yeet him up to a special two. Or special three. Your special two might hit him up to a special three. But other than that, this is probably the hardest fight. So yeah, let's go into the boss fight now. Finally, we have come to the final boss of 6.4.1. It's an ice man who has protection shielding, which is basically if you would lose more than 4% health from a single attack, it'll be capped. It's like the purple shield thing on the screen. But if you do more damage, it'll be shut down. The shield will shut down for 8 seconds. Immunity to stun. 
and heal block and matador so basically the only way you can gain power which is actually works for corvus in this fight is every time they use a special you get one bar and since their power bar fills up faster than your own it's kind of, i don't know if it's a better node but it helps the players in some scenarios but right there i failed a special one for this boss you literally just need to bring a counter to ice man if you don't have anyone because i tested it without a different character without an a um, cold snap snap immune character he does the cold snap will just destroy you it does like <sighs> over 3k a tick or something like that so like 6,000 a second you pretty much just most characters i don't know if any characters can even live through that right there i just failed a special one but overall not that hard of a boss technique um in comparison to other stuff we've seen so as long as you have like a Iceman counter, that's pretty much it, and you know to dodge a special one. This fight's pretty easy, actually. So, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. This is just 6.4.1, the first quest of the day. I don't have any other quests unlocked right now, so can't show you guys anything else until maybe tomorrow or the day after. I don't know when we'll get the second quest unlocked. So, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Get a like, comment, subscribe, and yeah, see you guys in the next one. Peace.